out to Greg. Welcome to the show today. Hello. Thanks for having me again. It's so great to have you back. And today we're going to talk about growing fruit trees in extreme climates. Now, you live in Phoenix, Arizona. In yeah. what way is the climate extreme? <laughs> well, uh, it is 2020. And this year, uh, we beat the record of uh, temperatures over 110. Our previous record was 33 days over 110 degrees. And we went well over 55 days. Uh, we also had our warmest month ever in July, only to be beat by our warmest month ever in August. And how does that affect fruit trees? Well, it affects everybody and everything in, mm -hmm. you know, just th that kind of heat slows things down. Um, what it does to the fruit trees is it literally cooks them in the ground. So we, we have to do um, many things in order to successfully grow fruit trees. The reason I started my fruit tree education program 20 some years ago was because I discovered that we can go into most big box, most nurseries in every big box store and they will sell you a fruit tree that will never make fruit here. And I suspect that's the case wherever you live. The three key pieces of that are chill hours. So you in Toronto get many more chill hours than we do here in Phoenix. So we have to use low chill trees to plant them to make sure that we actually get fruit. Chill is anything under about 38, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And each tree needs a certain amount of chill hours in order to set fruit. Chill hours was point number one. Point number two. Point number two is rootstock. You need to do the education for yourself to make sure that you know the right and appropriate rootstocks for your area. Often what will happen, especially with the big box stores, they'll call a grower and they'll say, hey, we'll take 3,500 Santa Rosa plums on XYZ rootstock. XYZ isn't a rootstock. It's just an example of a rootstock. And um, they'll take those 3,500 Santa Rosa plums, and they'll ship some to Phoenix and some to Los Angeles and some to Seattle, all on the same rootstock. The thing is, the rootstock that grows in Seattle or Toronto is going to be different than the rootstocks that are for Phoenix. So you need to understand the rootstocks that are appropriate for your area and then buy appropriately. interesting email from Armand from California, or this is a Facebook post. Hi, Susan. I live in Ojai, California. Summer gets very hot in August and September. And at that time, I completely lose plants and trees. So I was thinking that it might be a good idea to plant a large tree shading my fruit trees from the West sun. What would you say to Armand from California? Absolutely. Plant Western shade without a doubt. Get it done as soon as you can. I call that grown shade as opposed to paid for shade. Paid for shade is shade cloth or putting up some kind of shade structure. And for temporary shade structures are good. Definitely you want to uh, plant. Here in the desert, I like native mesquites or native Palo Verdes. They grow fairly fast and they provide a dappled shade. But Western shade is imperative, especially in places like Arizona and Ojai. I was talking with Janice, who is the manager of the fruit tree program, and a friend of mine, Ryan, in 2017 about soil temperatures. And so I bought one of those soil temperature guns that you point at the ground, and I went out in the front yard at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon in August of 2017 and I pointed it at the ground and it was 140 degrees at ground level. Wow. That's and I hard. dug down <laughs> six. Yeah. I dug down six inches and it was 120 degrees. That's enough to kill your trees. Well, 10 feet away, I had sweet potatoes growing. And when I pointed it at the ground underneath the sweet potatoes, it was 89 degrees. 
So planting a cover crop, we mentioned cover crops earlier, of some kind to shade the ground, just like you would sh plant a tree to shade the wall of your house, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to cool the space down. So we actually suggest two things here in the low desert uh, for shading the ground. And the important key here is to make sure that you're using something that is on the same watering schedule as your tree. So if you plant a watermelon underneath the tree, it needs to be watered every two or three days. If you plant sweet potatoes or cow peas, which are the two things that we suggest, they can go on the same watering schedule and they'll grow up nicely and spread out in the space and shade the ground underneath there. And that is a huge limb up for your trees.